Bokatov, Chavrim, I'm Steve Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Listen, we've been following the events that are happening over in Israel closely this morning. Uh, also, my good friend, Brother Gary Lowry, has been sending me these updates of things that are going on. And also, friends in Israel letting me know. Right now, the Israeli military, the IDF, is very tight-lipped about what's going on. I know that uh, last night soldiers were, were gearing up, they were leaving out, they were not saying what they were doing, why they were doing it. Um, and at the same time, this morning in the daylight hours over in Israel, the Israeli IDF was bombing once again over near the airport in Damascus. According to uh, an official release by the Israeli government, uh, they have admitted now that they're targeting the Quds Iranians inside of Syria, and they are asking for the Syrian military to not to engage or try to shoot down their planes while they are doing this. Uh, it seems to me that uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu is definitely wanting to draw Iran into a war. They're trying to bring this, get this conflict started because they're wanting to have an excuse to be able to take down Iran, uh, take down their nuclear facility, and of course, as General Wesley Clark pointed out to us, that seven nations would be brought down in five years. And I'm not a supporter of the Iranian government by no means, but I will tell you one thing that concerns me is that in the process of attacking uh, so-called Iranians inside of Syria, we're finding out that RT is reporting that it's Syrian military that is being killed in this process. Four Syrian soldiers uh, were killed, two of them were wounded in the latest Israeli strikes uh, that are going on. And it may be that Israel is also targeting uh, the Iranians as well, but to me it seems to be more of a provocation. It is trying to drag Iran into an open conflict to get Iran to strike Israel. <clears throat> and the problem is, uh, once this happens, it's going to be our own people, the Israelis, that suffer in this conflict. It'll be Israelis that will lose their lives because then the bombs are going to fly in from all different directions. And yes, that will give Israeli uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu the green light then to uh, take out Iran, as the U.S. Pentagon has wanted to do. And uh, But in the long run, what is it going to accomplish? After all, I may not like the ideology of the Iranian regime by no means, but the thing is, it was the Iranians that came to help the Syrians to drive out ISIS and the jihadists in the region, and they weren't there attacking Israel in the process. And so that's one thing that we have to be honest and true when we speak about the things that are going on in Syria. And the problem is, it should, shouldn't have been Iran helping uh, Syria to get rid of these jihadists and the ISIS militants that were in Syria. It should have been Israel, because after all, the Israeli uh, government should recognize that the Syrian government is where all the mothers for the 12 tribes come from. You know, it's Rachel, Leah, Bila, and, and Zilpah. All four of our mothers are, the, are, the, are Syrians to begin with, and of course Laban. We had made this covenant to not to do him harm. So are we going to honor this covenant or are we going to break it once again? Well, it's probably obvious we'll break it because, you know, Laban had made that incredible prophecy when he said to Jacob, even though we be apart and we do not see one another, if you take any other wives other than my daughters, God be a judge between you and me. And Israel has done exactly that. Instead of making an alliance with Syria that we should make, in order to bring peace about in the Middle East, we have turned around and made that covenant with Rome. And oddly enough, if you remember when John Kerry, who was a close friend of President uh, Bashar al-Assad, was able and willing with Assad to make peace with Prime Minister Netanyahu. But Prime Minister Netanyahu, on the other hand, decided that he didn't trust Assad. Instead, he chose the Pope of Rome and made the covenant with Rome. So instead of taking the daughters of Syria that Laban said that he should be, that, you know, that if you take any other daughters other than my daughters to be your wife, he said, God be a judge between you and me. And Prime Minister Netanyahu instead chose to make the covenant with Rome, signed the Nostra Aetate, 
with the Vatican, the Jewish Congress, they signed this Nostra Aetate, and they took in Esau, who has already been married into every type of idolatry you could imagine, married that into Israel instead, and has broken the covenant, broken the prophecy, um, or fulfilled prophecy, actually, but uh, broken the covenant that was made with Syria. Israel, even as RT, one of the reporters on RT one time, when they had uh, 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 one of the Israeli, uh, oh, I can't think of her name right off the top of my head. It'll come to me in a moment here, though. But uh, she was on the interview, and the, and the RT reporter challenged, said, why didn't Israel come to the, to the help of Syria to drive out ISIS? And, of course, uh, she says, you really expect us to go help them? Well, in my opinion, yes. This is your kinsman. This is your near kinsman. This is your neighbor that we should love as ourselves, not over there bombing them. And instead, Syria has to seek help from the, form, the old ancient Persian empire. They have to seek help from them. They shouldn't have had to seek help from them. But instead, the elite of our nation was too busy arming jihadists and supporting ISIS to be able to overthrow the government and to kill off even the believers in Israel, those believers in Yeshua, who were the original house of Israel, the Ephraimites, as the scripture says, Damascus will become a ruinous heap. There's no doubt it'll become a ruinous heap, but according to verse 10, the ones that are responsible are those that have forgotten the God of their salvation and are not mindful of the, of the rock. That indicts both the Jewish nation and as well the NATO nations that are believers in Yeshua. That indicts the evangelicals that are backing Trump to go blow up Syria along with Israel. The indictment is there. Because when he says you're not mindful of your rock, it is the Christians that believe that Yeshua is the rock. He is. He is. Christ Jesus is that rock. And Israel has forgotten the God of their salvation. And so therefore, the fortress of Ephraim, the house of Israel, that remnant, those that believed Yeshua's message when he was here and came from Syria, and they, everyone were healed and went back, and they started those first churches there, or, or synagogues that were believers in Yeshua back in those days that have lived all the way down to this day here. But yeah, now tens of thousands of them have been murdered. And who was the one that tried to help them? It wasn't Israel. Don't, don't try to claim the title. It, it's not going to work because there's, let me tell you something. The believers in, in Syria write to us here at Israeli News Live, and they let us know. It's Bashar al-Assad, the president of Syria, that is protecting them. It's definitely not Israel with the jihadists that behead the Christians. No, it's not. I'm Stephen Benoon, and I'm troubled by what I'm seeing, but prophecy is going to continue to get fulfilled. And Netanyahu will bring upon the, 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 the Israeli people a war, not to say that they won't win. Yeah, Israel will win the war, but after how many millions of our people are going to be slaughtered in it? And as one brother, a believer, who is a Jew living in Israel, said to us, and he said, I can't say publicly these things, Steve, but I'll, I'll let you know. He said, then we'll begin the persecution on the believers here when the chaos comes. And they crack down and they set in martial law in Israel. And it ends up being not only the two-state solution, it should be a one-state solution with equal rights for the Palestinians, just like it is for the Jewish people. And there's many Israelis that believe that way too, but they've said to us, we can't say it publicly because of persecution. That's fascism when you can't speak. And it's not that the Israelis are fascist at all, but there's that little minority, just like Adolf Hitler was a little minority that could control an entire nation. But then he brainwashed the nation. Israelis are not brainwashed though, but there's a little elite group in there that is going to try to establish the vision, but they're establishing the vision with who? With Rome. To bring out prophecy the way they think it should be. I'm troubled by this. I'm Steve Benu with Israeli News Live. Listen, we'll be bringing more out to you as quickly as we can. Shalom.